Today's video is about action potential, which is how neurons communicate with each other and with other cells. First, we're going to look at a neuron and its different parts. The nucleus contains the nucleolus, organelles, and the cell's genetic information. The nucleus is contained within the cell body, or the soma, and the soma receives signals from dendrites. Dendrites receive signals from other cells and conduct them to the cell body, where the signal is passed down the axon to other neurons, muscles, or glands through junctions formed by the axon terminal. Myelin sheaths allow electrical impulses to be transmitted quickly and efficiently along the nerve cells. And lastly, nodes of Ranvier are periodic gaps in the myelin sheath that facilitate the rapid conduction of signals down the neuron. Now if we zoom in, we can better understand the signals that pass through the neurons. Here we have the neuron at rest. The orange represents the outside of the cell, and the blue represents the inside of the cell. Outside of the cell, there is a high concentration of sodium ions, which are positively charged. And inside of the cell, there is a high concentration of potassium ions, which are also positively charged. Inside the cell, there are also large negatively charged proteins that give the inside of the cell an overall negative charge, while the outside of the cell has an overall positive charge. Embedded in our membrane, we have a potassium leaky channel, a sodium-potassium pump, a voltage-gated sodium channel, and a voltage-gated potassium channel. The leaky potassium channel always remains open, allowing potassium to flow outside of the cell according to the concentration gradient. Meanwhile, three sodium ions from the inside of the cell position themselves in the sodium-potassium pump. Then, an ATP gives one of its phosphates, causing the protein to change shape and release the sodium ions to the outside of the cell. Then, two potassium ions position themselves inside of the protein. The potassium ions cause the protein to change shape once again, resulting in the release of the phosphate and the release of the two potassium ions into the neuron. Both the leaky potassium channel and the sodium potassium pump are vital in maintaining the electrochemical gradient of a neuron. The difference in charge between the inside and outside of a neuron creates a resting membrane potential, which at this point is negative 70 millivolts. Neurons also have voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels. These channels only open with an electrical stimulus. When this stimulus isn't strong enough, meaning it doesn't pass the threshold, it results in graded potentials and remains at the resting state. However, when the stimulus is strong enough, the voltage-gated sodium channels open and sodium ions rush in. The sodium-potassium pump and the leaky potassium channel continue working during this process. Once the membrane potential reaches about positive 40 millivolts, the sodium channel becomes inactivated. The rush of sodium makes the outside of the cell negative and the inside positive. The neuron is depolarized. Then, the voltage-gated potassium channel opens. Potassium rushes out of the cell, the sodium channel finally closes, and the cell is repolarized. The outside of the cell becomes positive again, and the inside negative. Sometimes too much potassium rushes out of the cell, causing hyperpolarization, but with our trusty sodium potassium pump, the membrane potential will eventually be brought back to its resting state of negative 70 millivolts. An important thing to remember about action potential is that it is frequency and not the strength of the action potential that varies. So, the frequency of an action potential will be much greater if you're being chased by a lion versus if you're smelling a flower, but the strength of the action potential does not change. Thanks so much for watching!